Wow. So, Will, if you go, by the way, Will, if you're in the drive, like our shared drive for war, there's like Brit. I recorded six new commercials. Okay. Yeah, I actually. Okay, let me go to that Google Drive. I did. It's a com- It's a drop for every show. Then I do one Wait, about the you know Patreon. What? Actually, you know what? Actually, no. I'll get them from the drive. Uh, I don't. I don't need them in the media fire or something. Uh, yeah. It's a drop for every show except ours. A promo for our show. Um, and then a promo for the Patreon. And then what we could do in the interim then is also start promoting that we're going to move to Thursdays. We can start doing that tonight if we really okay. want to. Because we have to slate it for the first week of October because that's when SmackDown moves. All right, commercials. We got drops, network IDs, Patreon edge. Okay, I like how you, I like how you organize this. I didn't even organize it. Bones organized it. That's what I know. Yeah, you did a good job. I get the podcast. Yeah. I'm so proud of fourth wall. All right, good. Okay. Yeah, I'll download. I'll download all these tomorrow. I'll keep this. Before. Yeah, there's a shit ton. More people are gonna bring. More people are gonna put more stuff. So you'll have a variety. Yeah. No, I'll record mine during our first break because it's just easier. You can. Yeah, you can do the four shows during our first break. Yeah, and then we should do a show ad. That's a good idea. The three of us. Yeah. Mm. That was a good idea from Buzz. Uh, Buzz Bones. Bones. <laughs> Buzz. 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 Yeah, Buzz. 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 What is this? One sixty-five. One sixty-five. Yes. White claw. White claw. No. White claw. No. No. White claw. <laughs> <My God. laughs> and the I'm going to a better place. Oh, <laughs> truly. <laughs> 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 so good. Does everybody see the uh, agenda? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Yeah, I get to wear a suit tomorrow. I'm so excited. Okay. Are you? Do you really? Yeah. Which um, I forget whose IPO it is, but next week is Peloton's IPO, so that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Fun. I can actually say that now because they've announced they're going on Nasdaq, so I can say that. Oh, sweet. Uh, oh, so, so no more inside uh, training. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, a, mo- a month ago I couldn't, <laughs> but now I can. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Are we ready to go? It's 165. Yes. Yes. yes, it is. I'm recording. I'm also recording. Kate, are you recording? I've been recording this whole time. Fucking no. All right, whatever. Make Will's I job, said... Make Will's hey, job harder. Why don't you? Well, Kate, not this whole you, time. No, it's fine. I'll pull it out. I'll find it. Kate, when, you, when you're not sad. talking, you shouldn't see, like, any audio form coming out of your recording. That's how you know if your audio is messed up. Yeah. Wait, what? So, like, you should see gaps in between when you say something, when you don't say something. Because, yeah. like, when you give me an audio file, it's just, like, a straight bar. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then when you talk, it kind of goes up and down. When you're not talking, it should pretty much just be, like, a silent bar. It should yeah. be flat. Is that how it is? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. You'll be good. All right, let's get the show on the road in three, two, one. I gave it a mega clap this week. <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> it was a good week. <laughs> it deserved it. This week worked hard. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Kings of the Rings podcast, exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio. I am your host, resident Universal Royalty King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs on all social media outlets. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Subscribe and listen to us each and every week where all podcasts can be found by subscribing to our network, Wrestle Addict Radio, at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter, Wrestle Addict Radio on Facebook and Instagram. And quite frankly, it has been one hell of a week of wrestling. I don't know where to start. I'm fucking speechless. So let me gather my thoughts and let me and while I do that, let me hand it over to the founder, the proprietor, the man who hasn't slept in three days, Mr. Will Tarsh. I forget what a proprietor is, but I know I am one. But in the words of Shelton Benjamin, <laughs> ain't no stopping me now, because I have been working <laughs> crazy, ridiculous hours. 
inside and outside of the office, on the Ambiguous Network, on so many crazy shit. But of course, that's that's for a podcast from another time. It's me, it's me, it's Shelton Benjamin T. Um, you can find me everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Will Tarish, T. S. Thomas, A-R-A-S-H, UK, and buzz, buzz, Kate Murphy. Buzz, buzz, bitches. I haven't said that in a while. It is Not me. with that much enthusiasm. Nah, I'm feeling a little peppy today. It is me, your queen bee, up past their bedtime. You can find me <laughs> on Instagram at the Kate Murphy and on Twitter at underscore the Kate Murphy. My wig has been snatched from all the wrestling this week, and I cannot contain my joy. It's been absolutely unfucking believable. Like. This is, we are entering, and I'll t- I'll say this right now, and I'll and I'll save my um my e- elaborated thought for a Patreon special at some point down the road. We are entering another golden age of wrestling. We're going back to the '80s, guys. Hair bands and all. Maybe <laughs> in this version, Eddie. In, in this version, Eddie Money's still alive. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, so we are entering another golden age of wrestling and it was it was no more evident than this past wednesday night on the usa network for the first time ever nxt went live and holy shit they did not disappoint what a show i have nothing but praise for that first ever live show that they did with a bunch of people who were pretty much more known on the indies than they are in professional wrestling. They went balls to walls um, on that first hour. It was fantastic. They should have shown the second hour, um, although there's this whole show called Suits that is ending, but they just have to do. So that's that why... Really the-, the reason is because... Matt Meg wasn't lying to me. I thought they were joking. It's because no, of Suits. No, Suits. It's because of Suits. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and NXT got preempted for suits. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Um, it was. Uh, there's so much to talk about this show, um, but uh, we'll we'll get into that a little bit. I will say you have the women's fatal four way to kick off a show, which, by the way, how fucking fitting because the women's revolution in wrestling and in WWE in particular started in NXT. It wasn't on the main fucking roster with the fucking Bella That's Twins. That's okay. 100% true. 1000% <laughs> true. So it was only fitting that the women kick off the live era of NXT. Triple H's uh, promo at the beginning gave me fucking chills. Um, it was fantastic. Izzy the super fan was there. Hulk Hogan guy was in the crowd. It was just an amazing atmosphere to be. I was so jealous that it was not there. Kate, what did you think of a live NXT? I have no words for how no, good. No CM Punk guy. <laughs> no, no CM I... Punk guy. It had all of the raw energy and excitement of a takeover, which I really appreciate. And like, if we're gonna see that every week, that's really exciting. The crowd was so into it. The stage setup was a little different. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. The, the yeah, ramp is no, bigger. Yeah. The ramp no. is huge. It's like an, it's like an entrance way. It's no actual ramp, right? I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. I wonder if. I wonder if it's gonna be on Hulu. Um, I wonder if because I wonder that too. Three weeks. So that I, I meant to Google it, but I forgot. But if not, I'll I wonder check. if the first hour is gonna be on the network tomorrow. Because if not, I'll find a way to watch it. I I, I couldn't find time to watch it tonight. I had to watch the Chronicle and SmackDown tonight because you know it's uh you know you Hulu know Raw Tuesdays. <laughs> Hulu Raw Tuesdays, baby. Yo, Raw. I could tell it's gonna be a wrestling when the graphics are upside down and Ray and Renee Young said it on TV. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what I knew. I'm like, it's gonna be a great week in wrestling. And God damn, I was not disappointed. Oh my god. All right, so let's go back to NXT. Like I said, the women's fatal forward to kick up a show. Every woman in that match shined. Candice LeRae <laughs> shined. Mia Yim, Mia Yim Bianca Belair, Io Shirai. I can't pick up any. I can't think of any four women that are better in NXT right now, to that's to it. kick. Yeah. That's their four. That's your yeah. core four of NXT right now, and they they damn near stole the show of the entire special, almost, until you had Velveteen Dream and Roderick Strong. Oh my god! Bye. Yeah, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Draped in gold, and baby. Is now draped in gold, and NXT is now officially 
undisputed. I fucking laugh. See, I that, that gave me a chill just thinking about it. Like my spine just like, Will, are you okay? And I'm like, Yeah, dude, it's NXT. You're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, that's very that's very exciting. I can't wait to only, listen. That's only the first hour. <laughs> I couldn't breathe within the first hour. And going in, I knew that NXT was going to become undisputed by the end. But still, it just, it hit, it hits you. It was, ew, fuck. Drew, it was so a, good. If this is group of four that deserve it more, it's the Yankees. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, like, the, these four guys have been in NXT for so long. Um Multiple time champions, and now the fact that Roderick Strong finally has a belt, you know, that, that he actually won by himself without like someone getting hurt for it, <laughs> good for him. Like it's 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 incredible, and the prophecy prophecy has been fulfilled. And props to Triple H. And I wonder how long they plan to go on live television because I wonder if Triple H is coming to back. It's like guys, just be patient. Like your time's gonna come, especially with like Gargano and like Ciampa. Uh, people have been there just have overstayed that as long as I should have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, like, everyone down that roster deserves it. Even Cash Sono deserves it. <laughs> He's yeah. on there. my TV right now. But here, here's the thing now. Now that they are alive, now that they're live weekly, they're, they're, there's going to have to be a push to make them as equal or even greater than the third, the, the third brand of WWE. They right. have to be. I want to play a game. What do you think the rating was? I don't know, like, Apple TV ratings, but, like, how many people do you think watched it? Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I think it's a high number, and I'll tell you why. Because that first hour happened, and when they said, we're going to do a second hour on the WWE Network, the network crashed. Yeah, no my network one, crashed. It, it no logged one me could out. Log in. Yeah, everybody got logged is. out. No one could log in. People were People were frantically trying to log into the network to see the second hour of NXT. That's you know got to be a good sign. You know what I did? Huh? A million what viewers? Have... I want to say two. You got to say two million viewers? You think two million people watched this show tonight? Yeah. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give 800,000. That's being nice. I say 1.3. I think a lot of people hey. watched it, but not like raw numbers. Even raw numbers are low, but we'll, I mean, we'll yeah. see. I managed to circumvent the network crashing because what I did, because I was watching Hulu like all afternoon before I put uh, oh, NXT so you, had the, you had the network on the whole time. I had the network uh, at fucking 7.55. I clicked into the network. Switch back to the TV, watch NXT the minute it ended, just switch the input and hit play. Nice. Smart move, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Everybody dude, try- I've, I've, had the, I've had the network paused on fucking WCW for the past three days. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch it, and I couldn't watch it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how you know. <laughs> NXT was <great. laughs> Yeah, no, NXT was fantastic. That second hour had Pete Dunne in a match. Um, it was supposed to be Kushida in a match, and then out of nowhere, Imperium showed up. If anybody knows who Imperium is, it's the faction that Walter created. Me, 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 me. Oh, my God. What an, what, what an entrance. I can't Uh, wait for Saturday. I can't fucking wait for Saturday. Imperium is made up of Fabian Eichner, um, Marcel Barthel. And um, Alexander Alexander Wolf of former Sanity days, um, and and Walter himself. They have the coolest looking jumpsuits in all of wrestling, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're just they're, they're, to to be to be completely breaking kayfabe here. They remind me of kind of like these really random, um, like if 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 there was a wrestling white supremacist group, it'd be them. Um, because they're like wow. this. Ma- what? No, they're all British, <laughs> they're all British dude. That's, no, they're, 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 no, they're not all British. Walter's from Austria. Oh, they're all yeah, pale. Yeah, they might, they're might European. Right. And they're, some... they're all pale white Europeans. They're white. And they're like, and they're like this ring is sacred. 
and we're here to we're here to make sure that we keep Miss Ring Singer. Like this is kind of weird, but I like it. But like this is making me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> and they were speaking about how they want to protect their sport and the integrity and the honor of their sport. Yeah, it's a lot of ooh, <laughs> it's a lot of undertones in that one. Um, be but as it may, I fucking love Imperium, probably because of the jumpsuits. I think the jumpsuits are fly as fuck. I would like one. <laughs> Can we get jumpsuits as like we'll a get, podcast? We'll get a wrestle addict radio jumpsuit. Yeah. And we'll all stand like Imperium. <laughs> Just be totally threatening for no reason. Anywho, Imperium invades NXT, which is weird because again, Imperium is an NXT UK faction. They attack this jobber. All of a sudden, Kushida comes out, and now Kushida's getting in Walter's face. Now, I don't know if you've seen Kushida. He's a tiny little Asian man. Walter's like a six foot eight, massive European. Walter's and like Chuck's... Dudley Dursley in the fifth movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen s- the guy once. <laughs> so to see Kushida just challenge Walter like this and almost knock him down, fascinating to see. But then everybody on Twitter was like, wait a minute. If Imperium is invading NXT. You now have Undisputed Era with all the gold. This could lead... Oh my god, it's War Games. I just figured it out. Oh, fuck yeah. We'll be there. <laughs> oh my god. It's Undisputed versus Imperium at War... It has to be Undisputed versus Imperium at War Games. It's tailor-made for it. It is absolutely tailor-made for it. Dude, this is, this is the Undisputed's third War Games in a row, dude. <laughs> 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 Adam Cole's like, like, can you give us something else? Like, put it into perspective. Like, he's he's got like I look at the calendar and be like, uh, May, June, July, August. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Time to die again. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, who's taking a crazy bump this year? Yeah. Josh, um... Josh, 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 Cole to you again. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Stop cheating over there, fish. <laughs> I know it's because of your knee. Stop fucking lying. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got to be it. I'm very excited for that. We saw the return of Leo Rush to NXT. He put on a killer show. Um, he he is not, he he beat only Logan. He beat your boy. That's okay. That um, is awesome. It was an He's awesome my book. It's, It was an awesome match, and it was actually for the for a number one contendership for the Cruiserweight Championship. And from what I've heard, 205 Live and NXT are going to merge. Or more so, the Cruiserweights are going to NXT, and they are going to phase out 205 Live. I think that's smart, because you need to fill that second hour, and I'd Mm. rather do it with non-main roster guys. And I don't know if I can even say that term anymore. I'd rather that with non-Raw and SmackDown guys. I would rather it be... The 205, the two guys who need the spotlight. It Absolutely. need a chance to shine. And to let them go the way Triple H wants them to go. It's a and 100% then, idea. Yeah. And instead of putting them on the pre-show, you now highlight them on a takeover. And they go bananas. Yep. Absolutely bananas. So I'm really hoping that 205 Live integration does happen. Um, and then at the end of the show, you were supposed to have Riddle versus Killian Dane in a street fight. Which started out like a street fight. They went all over the arena. They were outside. And then uh, it turned. And then out of nowhere, Walter attacked Matt Riddle. <laughs> and the rest and the rest of Imperium attacked Matt Riddle. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the street prophets came and attacked Imperium. And then the Forgotten Sons and came the forgotten and attacked sons. the street prophets. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, everyone needed to be on the card, man. Everyone had to be there. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, pretty much the entire male roster is fucking trying to kill each other in the parking lot of Full Sail. Yep, and then they went back into the arena and everybody's trying to kill each other. Um, Killian Dane does a uh, tope suicida onto a bunch of people on the outside. I mean, that's how NXT ends. It just uh, ended like that. It ended It ended early, too. It ended at like 9.53. Just complete and utter and total mayhem. Real talk, how long before Nick Giacobbe debuts in NXT? Well, you saw. All right, speaking of Nick, let's side let's sideberg a little bit. So Nick, does anybody follow Nick on Instagram still? I no. see his Twitter. I know he did the internship, right? He was that's what Nick couldn't tell us. He was interning with the WWE Performance Center. That's why he had why, to leave. Why couldn't he tell us that? 
I don't know. I'm like that sounds silly. But okay, but all, good for him. I, I, also that, that, like, I was like that should have been that should have been my guess, but good for him. I'm proud of him. <laughs> I mean, that's that's probably something that he was told that he can't do. Well, no, I no, I mean him. I bet WWE said you can't do a wrestling podcast. I bet that's a hundred percent what they said. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, why couldn't he tell us why he was leaving? Like, like, like us, like me knowing, and you. Knowing <laughs> that he probably got he probably got both of them confused. He's like, they probably told me he can't do a wrestling podcast, and he probably translated it to like. I can't tell anybody I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't put that kind of opportunity in jeopardy. Yeah. So, no, no, I, do, I totally him. agree. Good for him. And also, by the way, good for another uh, fan of a show who showed up at one of our tailgates last year, Izzy. I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter yesterday. This is NXT related, by the way. But I don't know if you saw on Twitter yesterday. But Izzy got an exclusive on-camera interview with Tomasa Ciampa. She also got an interview with Kaylee Ray today. Yeah, Izzy's gonna blow up. Um, she is she is tailor made for WWE in the future in whatever role she does. She already has great interviewing skills. I'll tell you that yeah, right Alundra, now. A bunch of Blades already put her over. Really? Did she yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, because I'm friends with both of Izzy's parents on Facebook, and they love showing pictures of how famous their daughter is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of it was one of them was uh like a an Alundra Alundra Blades tweet and um. She was just like, you're going to be a superstar one day. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. But Izzy got the exclusive from Ciampa himself. And Ciampa revealed on this, I guess, Izzy special that doctors have told him that he will be able to return to wrestle someday. Someday. Okay. That's good. Someday. He is not cleared yet, but he has, the doctors have said he will be able to wrestle again. And that is good news. That's great news. Especially, like I said, if NXT is going to be that third brand, he doesn't have to move up anywhere anymore. He can stay where he's at. Stay home, baby. He can stay home where everybody loves him. And, I mean, I've met Ciampa before. Couldn't be a nicer person. Um, You know, genuine great guy. If you ever saw his little mini doc on YouTube, that was also very, very heartwarming as well. About everything that he's gone through, um, I mean, and, and everything these superstars are going through, like NXT, this this whole NXT experience is something that tr- Triple H will be more of a legend for creating NXT than anything he's ever done in the ring. A thousand percent. Ooh, as maybe we'll, I... we'll see. See what a dust settles. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's the way I see it right now. He has he has taken this grassroots thing from a small co- from a full sale co- full sale university, whatever, uh, to selling out arenas around the world. Yeah, the dude, first... he, took Titus, he took Titus O'Neil shrugging into a, a dizzy bat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to prime time television. He. Yeah, he, I mean, the Performance Center is his thing. You expand it to the UK. The UK now has their own Performance Center as well. He has just revolutionized. He's totally changed the landscape of wrestling. And it's crazy. You know, and now with the advent of AEW, and I'm not even trying to shit on AEW, with everything that's going on in wrestling, specifically with WWE, competition, you know, with the with the invisible hand of competition, the consumer wins, with all the product and the creativity that WWE has shown us that they can do in one week, I'm gonna be I'm gonna find it really hard to change the channel on Wednesdays from NXT to go watch AEW. Dude, I'm so happy AEW exists because WWE television is just going to be so much better. Dude, I yeah. kind of give it to Raw a little bit. Everything Bray Wyatt did, that closing like shot of Raw was just like... Perfect. It was terrifying. Yeah. It was, go down in history. And, and, and of Clash of Champions, I was just like, this this gimmick might be one of the... It's probably one of the best gimmicks of all time already. Like yeah. it, it, remind, yeah. it reminds me of 1996 Mankind when he first debuted. Except it's 2019 with a bunch of more graphics and production, and it's just better. It's 96 it's, Mankind mixed with the Boogeyman, what the Boogeyman was supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's it's amazing. Wrestling is so good right now. And it's yeah. football season. It's supposed to suck right now. Yeah, it's supposed to suck, and now it's climbing. <laughs> you know, it's climbing. And this now, is amazing. It's amazing. And also, they are they are strategically 
placed on days when football is pretty much non-existent. Besides Monday, Raw and Monday Night Football are always going to be forever in competition with each other. But your two other big shows, your NXTs, your AEWs, Wednesday, no football. Thursday night football, no one's like no one. There's nothing on there. And then you have Friday, which is pretty much there's no Friday night football, except yeah. for a couple of college games. And now you have your biggest show, SmackDown, going to be on there. And if WWE does this correctly, especially with the upcoming draft, which we'll talk about in, in further down the road, I had this epiphany today as I was coming home from work. WWE has slowly created an actual their own version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, WWE always calls themselves the WWE Universe, but now they legitimately have a distinct universe for everything. You did, they did that shit first. I don't want to hear it. No, Fuck they Marvel. did. <laughs> <laughs> but now I like actually, Marvel. <laughs> but now they actually have, you now have legitimate parts of the universe now. It's not just, you know, you're going to have exclusive people on Raw, exclusive people on SmackDown, people exclusive to NXT, people now exclusive to probably NXT UK. The Cruiserweights are now moving to NXT. So you're going to have specific people in different parts of the world, and it's all part of this one giant universe. It's now a very creative time to be, to enjoy wrestling. Hey, man, NXT right now is, is fantastic, but, you know, Vince McThanos can come in and just snap. <laughs> 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 ruin everything. <laughs> if those ratings don't hold up, like, like pretty good. Yeah. Vince McThanos is gonna come in, dude, and it's it's game over. <laughs> I I I do think the war's already started. AEW did purchase ad space on uh on the first hour of NXT that was shown live on the USA Network. Um, so the war has begun. So we'll see how it goes in a couple of weeks when uh when AEW and NXT square off for the first time ever. But that's going to be in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, oh, but after- can we talk about that for a second? Like, is that a, what? Do you think that's a smart move on AEW's part? Or is that a sign of, like... A sign of desperation? Yeah. I don't know. I was... When I saw it, like, I was... I was, like, half paying attention to it because it's a commercial. When I looked up and I was like, Jericho, and I was like, AEW on TAT coming at such and such a date. And I looked at it and I was like, that's ballsy. It's I don't think it's 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 weird. Like you don't see something like that. It's like it's like D, it's like a DC movie being like uh, previewed in a Marvel movie. Yes. Does that really happen? No, it doesn't. It's just it's it seems out of place because why why advertise on the enemy? It just it's it's it just seems like out of the box. It Which... would be if, um, sorry, can I'll let you go in a second. It would be if AEW was already established. They're not established yet. They have to get their name out there. They don't have a weekly show yet. Who has weekly shows? WWE does. Everybody knows that WWE is for wrestling fans, and a lot of wrestling fans watch WWE. Whether they like it or not, they watch it so they can shit on it, which is another story for another time. Fucking marks. Um, so what better way to kind of get your name out there to the casuals? Yeah, but it, 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 it feels like a beta move. Understandable. Like, it, it seems like you, you know you're the B, you have to advertise on the A show. Mm, okay. That's that's why that's why it feels weird. Do you do you do you attribute it similar to what WCW did when they first started? And they would leak Raw's results during the show. No, no, I think that's completely different. I okay. think that's more of I think that's more of Eric Bischoff is trying to keep people on their channel. I mean, because you know Vince's okay. Vince's rule is don't don't acknowledge the competition because there's no point to. But mm-hmm. there is ways you can do that to your advantage. And same with one about Bischoff, I had you know I had that one big backfire with mankind. Yeah. But huge. other than that, other than that, I want to watch. But I know what's going to happen. True. Very very true. And I think that is the reason why NXT went live, anyways. Mm. Hmm. That has to be the backstory. Like, like WWE is taking this AEW situation as being like, okay, we're the alphas. Like, if you know, if you noticed, um, yeah. and we mentioned it, we've mentioned this before. Every single time I've gone up against them, it's it's their 
their their B content, which is even fair to say as NXT is their B content, but it's not their power punches. Like they're 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 countering um, AEW's mighty left left hook with a right jab, and yeah. they're putting the mindset of AEW is equivalent to our number two. It's Correct. genius. It's, it, it then the viewer has that it gets subliminal kind of thinking of yeah you know. It's not. It's not worthy to go up against Raw or SmackDown. It's a subconscious way of thinking. It's subconscious yeah. way of thinking. Yeah. It just so happens if you go up against something that's better than Raw and SmackDown, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is the brilliance of it. Which is the sheer brilliance of it. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Vince and Vince and Trips and and the Brass are not fucking around this time, where they may have you know laughed at WCW and Bischoff in the beginning and and billionaire Ted. They are they are learning from their mistakes of the past, and they are going balls to walls. They're saying, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna try to beat us again? Not happening this time." And I'm I think ve- AEW is gonna be excellent too. I think AEW is gonna be just as good as NXT was tonight. They're gonna have to be. They have to. They have to. They have no choice. They just they don't have- lose the belt in the airport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they do what NXT did tonight, they're dead in the water before they start. Yeah. NXT was that damn good. Yeah, and I'm very much a believer in AEW, and I support AEW very much, but NXT was that great. Yeah, they they said we're they said we're gonna bring out all of our talent, and we're gonna show you why we're the most popular wrestling brand in all of wrestling. Mm-hmm. And they and, turned the fuck out. Yeah, they did excellent job. The NXT at this point right now, NXT is undisputed but we're going to take a quick little break we're going to pop a little bit of bubbly um and we're going to get into uh everything that happened at clash of champions um and we're going to find out who the father of maria's uh unborn child is right after this break (laughs) (laughs) it could be yeah never mind we'll be right back Quick, quick call the episode vince mcthanos that was brilliant It just popped in my brain. Like I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say like dripped in gold. Um, no, no, Vince McDonald's works well because because <laughs> he gets Vince McDonald's AEW too. <laughs> yeah, dude. All Vince has to do is literally snap and he changes the world forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! So, Will, you want to do your um? Four commercials. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me do that. Okay. Oh, one second. Let me, just, let me just mark the audio. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, I didn't stop a recording this time. Mm-hmm. Good job. What's going on, everybody? This is Will Tarish from the Kings of the Wings podcast, and you're listening to the Fourth Wall WrestleCast right here on Wrestle Addict Radio. That's one. Hello, everybody. This is Will Tarish from the Kings of the Wings podcast, and you're listening to Not Your Mama's Soap Opera right here on Wrestle Addict Radio. That is two. Uh, what's Nate's the game? Is it is this the Game Changer? The Game Changer Wrestling Podcast. Game Changer Wrestling Podcast. What's up, everyone? This is Yo. This is the founder of the Kings Wings podcast, Will Tarish, T's and Thomas, A R A S H U K. New link to the Game Changer podcast right here on WrestleAct Radio. Good save. Mm-hmm. What's up? Get the podcast. Yeah. What up, world? This is Will Tarashuk, and you're. I'm going to give you a fuck. I'm going to do that one again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're almost there. Hey, you're yeah. almost there. <laughs> I almost went four for four. I almost went. I almost went. You know uh, that scene in the office from Michael Scott's. Like sometimes I start a sentence, I'm not quite sure where I'm going. <laughs> That's me every time I open my mouth. Um, all right. What's up, everyone? This is Will Tarashuk, and I'm gonna have a little gift for you. You're listening to the Gift of Podcast right here on Radio. Nice. Woo. All right. That's four. Anything That's... else I gotta do? Uh, you gotta do a plug for our own show. Which can be like a thirty to sixty minute thing, and then a plug for the Patreon, like a general plug for the Patreon. Plug for the Patreon, okay. You're gonna do that right now. Yeah, I'll do that right now. All right. 30, 30 seconds. For the yeah, thirty to sixty. 
what's up, everyone? This is the main hope. Nope, <laughs> nope, can't nope, do that anymore. Nope, nope, not anymore. <laughs> What's up, everyone? This is Mike number two of the Kings of the Rings podcast, a.k.a. Will Tarashuk, a.k.a. the founder, a.k.a. the proprietor. And you guys, you have $5. I'm employed now, so I can afford $5 a month. And if you can afford just five American dollars a month, that's an Abraham Lincoln, not the brass one. You can get some great content on our Wrestle Addict Radio Patreon page with awesome content, including Wrestle Wars, where me, yours truly, goes back to the Monday Night Wars and goes week by week and see who really won in my scoring system. You have Watch the Throne with our own King Ricky Rose and a bunch of other content, mainly Jeff talking about his tattoos. So join us for five dollars a month on the Wrestle Addict Radio Patreon page. You won't regret it. You're gonna love it, and we're gonna love having you. Peace. Mostly Jeff talking about his tattoos. Love it. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was like 45, so I, I split. That should be fine. It doesn't really that was matter. great. And then one more, just plugging us. I don't know if you want to do the Thursday one now, because now i got to redo ours. i got to redo yeah. the one for ours, too, but whatever. You can figure it out. What's up, everybody? This is Will Tarashuk, T as in Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. But you already knew that because this is the one of the hosts of the Kings of the Rings podcast. And, guys, we are releasing new content every single Thursday on Wrestle Addict Radio. We cover it all from WWE to NXT to AEW and beyond. So join us every week, Kings of the Rings podcast. We'll love to have you, and you won't regret it. Deuces. <laughs> All right, so that'll be the Thursday one. We'll announce. I'll announce it in the uh, in the business uh, war page that we're going to move to Thursday, starting in the beginning of October. Now we've created brand new commercials for it. Um, all right, so are you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Are you ready, Will? Yep. All right. All right, and welcome back, everybody. Kings of the Rings podcast live exclusively here on WrestleAttic Radio. And before all of this NXT talk, I thought what we we're really gonna, what we we're going to be talking about is Clash of Champions and and Raw and SmackDown. But NXT kind of stole the week, to be completely honest with you. However, we cannot forget that Clash of Champions did happen, followed up by a very fantastic Raw and an equally impressive SmackDown. So let's start with class of champions what were some highlights some lowlights what did you enjoy what did you not enjoy uh me uh kofi winning thank the lord <laughs> yeah great that was a great match honestly i jumped yeah. out of my seat when kofi won yeah because they they you know what it is they protected that rko for a long time and then he hit it out of nowhere it's like son of a bitch here we go and then he kicked out i was like oh no i guess put on the rope Oh, no, he's right. It was full on rope. My bad. Yeah, you're correct. You know what it was? I, what, what's so good about that spot? It looked like Randy, because I think Randy hooked both legs. And then, so it's like Randy's kind of fault that he put his foot on the rope. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a no, good it was, spot. They, him, and, him and Randy actually had really good psychology. Yeah, I mean, you have you have you built up animosity for ten years. You better have good psychology. <laughs> I wonder what they're. I wonder what they're like backstage with each other. Like, they're probably like, oh, like they play, best of friends. Like they plan out the match. They're probably very professional. But I wonder if they're like because Kofi said in in a, like, when his his twenty four like you know it blurs the line between reality and entertainment, and sometimes real shit comes out. Um, so I wonder if there is any real animosity there, or if it's just kind of water on the water under the bridge for him because it all worked out in the end. Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe there's still some stuff there, but I think they've both been in WWE for so long that they can dislike each other, but still remain professional and put on a match. Yeah. Oh, Randy is Randy is well, other than shitting in back, he's one of the most professionals. <laughs> like, when, okay, when it when it comes to matches and putting people over and doing a like whatever, like he's okay. very professional. Yeah. Yeah. Also, some things that happened in this. Uh, Bailey. One in Flair Country stole literally stole one from Charlotte, and then ran out of the arena like she had to shit herself. <laughs> um, the memes are good. <laughs> the memes were fantastic. Um, Becky and Sasha match of the night. Mm-hmm. That didn't actually happen. Sasha got robbed, but match of the night. <laughs> no, that was exactly that was exactly what that needed to happen. That set up Hell in a Cell beautifully. Like yeah. 
Um, you guys know how I feel about how in a cell, how they need to be earned. Um, this was earned. Not just, not just given. This was 100% earned. I, I'll even say the Bray Wyatt was earned because it fits his gimmick. Um, yeah. So, and it's becoming very creepy and personal very fast. So the Hell in a, the Hell in a Cells this year, it seems to pro- they all they both seem appropriate. Yeah, uh, Braun looked really strong in a loss again. Oh, I loved it. Fucking <laughs> loved it. Hey, Murphy, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Kicking out of three stomps, Kate Murphy. Awesome. <laughs> That's why she's the third mic, folks. Just one word just tells it all. <laughs> You know what that reminds me of now that I think about it? You ever hear a story about Austin tells, or the big show tells about Austin when they were doing like a live event and Austin and he was, and Austin was trying to teach the big show to like be a big man and fire up and like act like a big man while wrestling. So we did a live show tour and during one of the tours, Austin would stun him. And when he would pin him, Austin said, kick out and he'd kick out. And then Austin would stun him again, and Austin said, kick out again. And they did this like four or five times, and it really built his character up. It's like, what is it going to take to beat this big man? And this is the same case in Braun. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sick of saying something, and then the next week it happens. <laughs> and by that, I mean the one count. <laughs> he got it one. I was just like, holy Darby Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the one count is a lost art form, but I mean, the big big men, if you're like over 6'5", you should be kicking out of one the majority of the time. Yeah. yeah. And gotta... I, I kind of want to call the Paul and be like, did you see that match? That's how you beat a big man. <laughs> 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 but I know he doesn't have the network, so he didn't see it. But Yeah. So, um, I... Go ahead, Kate. I enjoyed the match. I just, I'm just sick of Braun on Raw and doing Raw affiliated stuff. So like, I'm hoping he gets moved to SmackDown during the draft. It could change. Um, all right, so better tag team name for Ziggler and Robert Rude. Rudolph or Cheer Money? Rudolph. R- cheer Money? Cheer Money? Because Dolph used to be a cheerleader. Uh, oh. oh. Cheer, oh, cheer. That, cheer yes, Money. That's, that's an insider, but... What 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 would we have? Rudler? I liked Rudler. No, uh, Rudolph. I, Rudolph. Rudolph. I mean, Ru- Rudolph. Like, I, yeah, I get it, but like, that's one person. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not a tag team. That's it's what... a celebrity couple. <laughs> Brangelina. Yeah, that, that is a that is, that is a celebrity couple. I don't know. Cheer money's growing on me. Cheer Who money is growing. Cheer that money. Is Did I miss that? Um. Uh, well. <sighs> Explain beer money and cheer money. Uh, beer money. Well, Kate, do you know who beer money is? I don't remember. No. Uh, it was Robert Roode and James Storms' tag team in TNA. Like their greatest tag team. I didn't beer really money. follow TNA. Like honestly. And so their right, chant here's was. They, here's how the entrance. Here's how the entrance starts. Here's how I admit your music started. Beer money. Oh, There's no. Alba on the train. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how this, that's how they would come out. I went ending with beer money's music. I hope you know that. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm gonna purposely wait until I listen back to the show when it comes out, so I can hear it for the first time. <laughs> yeah, beer money. So cheer money is is would be hysterical. Cheer money um, would be hysterical, but I think not enough. <laughs> I know. Which I is think it's too Michael, smart. Michael Cole to explain it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Problem. You know what I was disappointed with at class? I I was disappointed in myself because I was actually cheering for uh, Fire and Desire. Why Dude, are you I was, disappointed? I thought they had it. <laughs> I'm upset. Me too. I I was convinced they were winning because of the finisher. Yeah. They got as good. <laughs> I was disappointed in myself too. I thought the show started at eight. <laughs> Everyone did. <laughs> It hasn't started in eight in like a year. I don't know. I don't know why. I, don't know why I, I turned that. the show on at seven, thinking pre-show was at seven, because I'm like, there's no way this is a four-hour fucking thing. You want to so watch I the ch- Dave over to watch him, and he'll text me like I'm on the way. I'm like, I'm on the train. I'm like, well, what? You have to, like, I'm like, oh, wait, seven o'clock. And Dave doesn't text you anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't heard from Dave. Yeah, shout out to Dave. Hi, he's Dave. Gonna- 
He's going to be at Evolve on Saturday. We'll see him, I think. He's going to be there? Um, yeah. yeah. Walter's showing up, so. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what else happened? Uh, Cedric Alexander got buried again, which is weird. Too quickly. Too abruptly. Yeah. Pre-show. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. That was really weird. I was like, AJ better than this. <laughs> yeah. Used. And the only person who actually really didn't defend his title, theoretically, was R-Truth. R-Truth didn't actually defend his title. He ran around for a while. Yeah, no. I, Can we talk about him and Kane? Yes. Because, before we do, before because, we do, before we do, okay, okay. what are you crowning class of champions? Also, by the way, Miz and Nakamura was, was fantastic as well. It's very entertaining. Yeah. 7.5. I, I enjoyed it. I still give it an 8. I think The Fiend at the end really sold it for me. Oh, my God, dude. Seth Rollins, I, I act like it was slob and knob. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was very snuff film, like. Yeah. yeah, he's choking Ron Jeremy back there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so let's move on the roll. Again, it was in Knox County. Well, wait, 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 what did Kate, what did Kate crown? Oh, what did you get a Kate? Yeah, sorry. I give it an eight. Nice. Aww, eight is great. Eight is great and rhymes with Kate. I wow. thought it was hilarious that Kane was simultaneously the mayor and a wrestler <laughs> in the same day. I I'm loved like, it. Like, could you, like, did, did you hit a pop job when you dude. showed up on TV? <laughs> it was amazing. The fact that Truth called him the president. <laughs> I was just like... I was like, if Trump lost his hair and like grew a few inches, yeah, dude, it looks like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pop that Kane got when he showed up on screen was fantastic. And I'm always forgetting about Knox County is Knoxville, Tennessee, wherever University of Tennessee is at. Um, not like I, not like I care for the University of Tennessee because I don't fuck them, go Gators. Um, but but I was very I was like, wow, he's actually a mayor of a like a legit, really massive county in Tennessee. <laughs> Like, like it's a no joke place. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> and there he was choke slamming people on Raw. <laughs> choke slamming people on Raw. <laughs> How does he get away with this? <laughs> Dude, Vince has to give them money. Like, or the you know what it was like because he obviously got paid for that. He probably like, all right, this is this is going towards the city or the county or my campaign or whatever. Something like yeah, he probably it's a donation of some point. Of yeah, some... like like he, there's no way he could pocket that money. <laughs> like, no, no way. No, no, that, no. That, I'm as sure a public what he got official, paid, he got donated. Yeah, yeah, whatever he got paid, he got donated. Um, and he, he I think he has to, <laughs> like, donate that money. You can't have two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> He has no choice, but oh uh, yeah, Kane and Kane and Archie, fantastic. <laughs> Kane showing up and then <laughs> being like, "I still got it." Well, <laughs> <laughs> <still got> <laughs> then Kane showing up in his gear, and then all of a sudden he put his hands in the air. I was like, "Oh my god, they're bringing a the fire pyro back for Kane. This is going to be amazing." And the fiend showed up. I was like, "So," I was like, "He's a legend killer now. He's killing everybody." He's going to be on the wall on Monday. I can't wait. Yeah. Dude, Raw was so wacky and fun. Like, Michael I love Cole, Raw like Graves, that. and Renee Young were just having a field day with the whole Maria, Man- I almost said Maria Menounos, Maria Canellis and Mike Canellis. Maria like, Canellis is. Up. Maria Canellis is just something else. Like, my goodness. What a character. Also, Renee Young mentioned Ricochet's ass, and you know what I was thinking of, Kate Murphy. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we do. I was I like, th- she saw the video. Uh, yeah. I wonder what I wonder what Casey Catanzaro thinks. Like, I want to see the video of Casey Catanzaro, Ricochet's um, Ricochet's uh, real life girlfriend, when Maria Canales was like, and Ricochet's a father. I just laughed. <laughs> My How favorite part tired. of that entire segment was... When Corey called him a beta Corey cuck. Graves. Yep. Mike Canellis is a clear beta cuck. He I, didn't say that on He yes, said it did. on television. He did. And they also said, what are I going to name a child, Trevor? And Which I Trev- Yeah, Michael Cole saying Trevor. Dude, they, they were telling you, they were having a field day. And I was like, 
No one me would hate this, but they got me in a good mood. It was graphics upside down. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, but upside down graphics really fucked me up. The <laughs> first they one like... I thought was production, <laughs> and I was like, fuck Raw. They don't even give a fuck about the graphic anymore. And no, then I'm like, oh, wait, was... it's The Fiend. <laughs> Renee's just like, wait, are these... <laughs> Have you been up the whole time? And Quigger's just like, yeah, Seth Rollins. Quigger's just like, Seth Rollins is in a, in a match. <laughs> and I then popped. It, and then they didn't turn the Firefly Funhouse music off when Braun was walking through backstage. <laughs> it was a rough day for the truck. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people got fired out of a truck on Monday. The whole truck got fired on Monday. I think you see Vince is walking to the truck. Fuck, I loved it, pal. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep it up, but don't do it again. <laughs> Throw I'll fire your ass. Also, shout, shout out to my boy Gio for serving Shane McMahon on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Yes. Gio Anatelli served Shane McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> and promptly got off screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, yeah, of course. He's a, uh, I think he's a producer there. I forget what he does there. Who knows? Yeah, Shane McMahon got, uh, Shane McMahon got sued. That was a good segment too. Like it, it, it made sense. Kayfabe, like you know, in the storyline. I was like, this is great. Yeah, and you know what I know what I would love to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in the Bleach Report article that you sent us, Kate. I would have loved to have seen KO show up on NXT. Be like, I'm fired. I'm nothing else to do. Can I come back yeah. here? <laughs> KO even made a tweet saying like I wasn't down there as long as I would have liked to be. When he was yeah. like posting about supporting NXT tonight. So I thought he was going to come back. I really did. It would have been cool. You know who, who did come back? Who? Luke Harper came back. And this should prove to everybody that dirt sheets are fucking stupid. Yeah, because... Mel Torrance is capable of showing up at NXT. <laughs> <laughs> Meltzer, Meltzer also said Mabel was going to be the third man. <laughs> You know, you have Luke Harper return, you have Leo Rush return, people who were just pretty much buried via dirt sheets that WWE was doing them dirty. And look at them, they're back in prominent roles. Luke Harper and Rowan destroyed the SmackDown set. They actually look like Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, they got their first names back. That's the biggest win of the week. Pretty much. Yeah. And that and Rowan can cut a promo. It's really weird. Like, was Rowan this talented the entire time? Dude, I said this months ago when he was just sitting there mute with Daniel Bryan on commentary. I was like, Rowan, great promo. <laughs> <laughs> I was right, dude. I have, a, I have, a, I have a, my track record solid. <laughs> it was just, I'm in, I'm interested in Rowan. Me too. I am too, man. Like he got, he got the win on Sunday, which was surprising in and of itself. But I mean, with Harper, and that was a, that was a huge pop as well. I was like, holy shit, Harper's back. Yeah, but like he. He's doing good work. Yeah, yeah. Which is the, which is the scary thing. It's like, what? We're, you've been in this company for almost ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it. His last good work was when he was in the Survivor Series five on five when Sting returned. When Sting debuted, actually. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was twenty fourteen. I mean, he's huge. So yeah. He's got, the, he's, got an, he's got a unique. He's got a good look. It took him three years to return from getting buried by The Rock. Yeah, and he wrestles like a big man. Like, fuck, man. Good. Good for him. It just shows that sometimes you need time. Sometimes you need time in WWE to to figure out what the fuck you need to do. Yeah. Austin said it before. It's believable. Yeah, and Austin said it before. Like, Vince will give you all the tools, but you have to make yourself a star. You know, and eventually it clicked, so good for him. Also, good for Rusev. That yeah. man, the amount of weight he's lost since he debuted is ridiculous. The he looks out. amazing. He looks yeah, he looks ripped as all hell. I mean, so does Harper. Harper dropped a, Luke Harper dropped a ton of weight as well. Yeah. Yeah, is, Kate, is, is Rusev a daddy? Bash. No. For the most part, mine is stashes. <laughs> like, Mustache Mountain is basically, I think, the exception. The only mountain you'll climb. Hell mustache. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, out, they're out of fashion. They're in fashion. Mustaches are totally fashionable again. Some... Joe Jonas has a mustache. 
No one cares about the Jonas Brothers. Shut the fuck up. Joe Jonas is great. <laughs> they have one good my song. Dad, my dad has had the <laughs> same They have multiple. Mustache. What good song are you saying is the Jonas Brothers' one good song? Sucker for You. That's the only one I like. Great song. I got into the Jonas Brothers this year, actually. Yeah, in, high school, I... in high school, I was too emo. And therefore, I felt I was above listening to the Jonas Brothers. But yeah, I, I went... Yeah, I was in high school around the same time as you, and I never listened to Jonas Brothers. It's when I was listening to hip hop heavy, a lot of Fifty Cent back then. Fifty Cent and G Unit. Oh, uh, Tony Ayo lives down the street from the high school I graduated from. That's sad. <laughs> he's very how, nice. See how far he's dropped off. How does Tony Ayo feel that John Cena stole his dance move? <laughs> Because, spoiler alert, Marks, John Cena didn't come up with the You Can't See Me thing. He stole it from a so seductive music video that Tony Ayo um, produced or was a part of. What a time. What a time to be alive. John Cena stealing from rappers. (laughs) And masturbation. And masturbation, yeah. Stealing from rappers and masturbation. The story of John Cena. (laughs) (laughs) New DVD. (laughs) AEW original. (laughs) <laughs> WEA original. <laughs> WEA joint. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god. All right. So as great as as great as Raw and SmackDown was, there is impending doom on the horizon, and it goes by the name of Brock Lesnar. But WWE the WWE's universe's version of Thanos. Kofi looking great. Well, hey, you sh- can't you can't, uh, hey, we named Vince McMahon as Thanos, all right? You can't have two of them. No, no, Brock is Thanos to the wrestlers. It was the last thing I was expecting. You know, you had Kofi in the middle of the ring. He was looking strong, cutting his promo, doing whatever. It, there was after a six-man tag. And then you heard his music. And, like, I, w- I didn't even pop. I was like, fuck, here we go. I think, only- <laughs> I think the only person that popped, you got to look online. You have to see Issa's video. She literally got so excited, she smacked herself in the face. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> she literally, sl- like, she, she goes to, like, put her hands on her cheeks, and she slaps herself in the face. <laughs> he came back. Brock is challenging Kofi on the inaugural episode of SmackDown on Fox. And as much as I dislike what the impending doom might be from a business decision, it's absolutely fucking perfect. Brock it was is the a first time Brock's wrestling on TV in fifteen like... years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Fifteen years on SmackDown, um, or something like that. Something, something wacky like that. It is. 15, it is fifteen years on SmackDown. I'm saying even on like on Raw television. So not only is it going to is not only a SmackDown Live going to debut on Fridays on Fox the same week that AEW starts their weekly episodic show and AEW has to go up against NXT on that same night that Friday night you have a 20th anniversary celebration of SmackDown highlighted by a WWE Championship match with Kofi Kingston your reigning champion versus Brock Lesnar. WWE, like you said, Will, like we've said for the last month or so, is not fucking around with its debut week in October. Yeah, not at all. No. Every day, they are all in. They are making sure that everybody is where they need to be. I'm about it. I it don't, benefits but, us. Yes, it does benefit us. I don't know the outcome of this match. All signs point to, and from a business standpoint, it points to Brock wins the World Heavyweight Championship. Dude, you're not gonna have a dusty finish on your debut show. Not a goddamn chance. <laughs> the only thing I'm hoping for is not a squash match. I hope I yeah, I hope they if if they are gonna go with Brock um winning the title again, and it would make sense from a business standpoint. Brock's your most over Brock's one of your biggest crossover personalities. We could have Rhonda come back as well. Um Oh my, my god. Yeah. That there's, there, there's the Ronda rumor has been spreading for a while. Um, I guess her pregnancy didn't go very well. <laughs> in, in preg- she almost lost her finger. Okay. <laughs> no shit, it didn't go well. <laughs> hey, hey, she just need a finger to make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's true. There were um, no fingers involved in baby making. I didn't. I missed that day in health class. Ricochet knows that all too well. <laughs> God damn oh, it. It's okay. <laughs> But no, if, if if they do, if they put the strap on Brock, I really hope they do Kofi with courtesy, and I hope Brock is willing to give Kofi the courtesy of putting on a main event worthy match. They have to. You'd fucking I mean, better. It's, it's it's your debut. You got to put on at least a ten minute match. I would even go fifteen. Nah, no commercial breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, would you be would you be ballsy and do that? Do you pay you pay off the ads that have no commercial breaks for the main event? I I would. They have the money. They do, and I I, I would I would even give them twenty no commercials. I don't go that far. You gotta go fifteen to so twenty for that main event. I'll so. give it twenty including entrances. Well you could do the okay. entrance, then cut the commercial, and then do the twenty minutes no commercial and Joe. Speaking of entrances and stuff, did you and anybody notice that during Clash of Champions, they stole NXT's version of uh, championship announcing with the lighting and everything? I love the lighting. It. I did notice that because there was the IC belt, and I was like, "Ooh, I like the gold." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh wow, someone's finally listening," and I hope they stick to that. I really do dude, because it makes it that much more epic, mood, dude. It sets the mood. It gets you ready to go. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. Um, hopefully they'll do it for Hell in a Cell. Who the fuck knows? Maybe we'll get a green cell this year. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> Who knows? Fire but we do. We, again. we do have Sasha versus Becky at Hell in a Cell, which all of it, and the Fiend versus Seth at Hell in a Cell, which again, Jesus Christ, it's going to be wild. I'm excited for Hell in a Cell. It's coming really early. It's October 6th. Oh my Jesus Christ. What? Okay. Hell in a Cell's October 6th. The first week in October. Yep. You... Oh, I don't want to hear it. Don't, so, don't even tell me. <laughs> September 30th. Well, we're going we're, to. So, uh, the first week in October starts on September 30th. So, September 30th, you have Monday Night Raw. Yeah. October 2nd, you have the AEW television debut. And you also have NXT TV Live. Okay, that Friday, you have a debut at SmackDown featuring Brock versus Kofi. That Sunday, October 6th, is Hell in a Cell. <sighs> we not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was aware of every date for every event, but it didn't occur to me until just now that it's all in the same week. Yeah. Oh, God. Four of those events are WWE events. And we're going to have playoff baseball. Football, too. And playoff baseball as well. My goodness. We're going to have a jam-packed next couple of weeks of shows and predictions and everything. So while we wrap our head around that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, evolving this weekend, um, uh, a very emotional chronicle, and who our number one pick in the WWE brand draft will be. So all of that when we come back. Fuck, that's a lot of wrestling. Oh, God. It's <laughs> a lot of coverage. Okay, so we, got, we got three, five, seven, nine. <laughs> that's, like four, that's like 13 hours of wrestling. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. going to be a lot. And we work full time. That's almost, that's almost two work days of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we not? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I, maybe that week we should cover something that's not wrestling. <laughs> we'll we cover should, the bachelor. We should, or something we should for... talk about our book collection. <laughs> we'll do a one-off show. Talk about something else. <laughs> I'll read excerpts from my. <laughs> yeah, we'll read excerpts from our personal memoirs of life. Yeah, I'll write poetry. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll just do high cues and not Andrew Dice Clay's voice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my Pikachu evolved to a Raichu. This is my version of a haiku. Oh, oh. that was terrible. Yeah, that was really I'm bad. Saying, sorry, not many words on rhyme with haiku. Yeah, no, not much at all. It, uh, haiku is not about rhyming; it's about syllables. And it's also about nature. What's five seven five? 
Five seven five. Yep. My favorite haiku. It's like haikus are hard. Some of them don't make sense. Refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five seven five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's the best one, dude. It's the best one ever. <laughs> I'm not going to hear anything different. <laughs> Are you ready to get back into it? Yes, I want to go to bed. Yes, you and I both. All right. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Kings of the Ring podcast exclusively here on WrestleMania Radio. And some housekeeping um, to, uh, to to announce really quickly uh, before I forget and before we go on to tangents about other things. Um, you're listening to us right now on Friday, but with everything that's going on in wrestling, with all the moves going on um, in wrestling between AEW and WWE and all the transitioning of shows, this, that, and the third, we have decided to also come a little bit early as well. So we will be they, we will be moving our show to Thursdays come uh, October. So when October hits, we are going to be moving to Thursday. So instead of Friday, you get us a little bit early. And honestly, coming early is just how we like it. So, um, so Thursdays Speak will yourself. be... <laughs> Whatever. Tide's always right on time for me. Anyway, but <laughs> Thursdays is going to be our new time slot uh, starting in October, so you will be reminded of that consistently moving forward. But be that as it may, another one of the big things happening on Thursdays, um, on thir- not on Thursdays, in October, actually, uh, for WWE, is that the draft is coming back. This isn't a superstar shakeup. This isn't we're picking, we're picking and choosing the superstars that are going to go to which show. This is everybody on all the rosters are up for grabs. And when they get drafted, they are exclusive to that brand. So brand exclusivity is coming back. The wild card rule is going away. Two major things, thank the Lord, um, that are happening. So the brand extension continues. It was in fear of leaving because Fox and USA were all pissed off at each other because they couldn't get so-and-so. Um, but I think we all realized the wildcard rule is absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> so wildcard rule is going away. Uh, brand exclusivity is coming back. <laughs> Wildest predictions. Who's the number one draft? Who would be your number one draft pick? Who's a surprise draft pick? Does anybody get drafted to NXT? Does anybody get called up from NXT? Because right now, you don't have to call up anybody from NXT anymore. I was told NXT is not part of the draft. Which I think is bullshit. Yeah. Because that was always a cool moment to watch the NXT people sitting around and to watch their name get drafted. Yeah. I think it should be an open draft for every show. Everyone just kind of has to sit on stage, and then off they go. In terms of number one draft pick. Who's your number one? If you're starting Raw or SmackDown, who are you drafting first? Who are you building your show around? Got to be Roman Reigns. I think Roman's going to go back to Raw. You should... I don't know. You might, I don't know, honestly. That's that's a very good question. CM Punk. <laughs> it would be this would be the time. I, honestly, him. at this point in time, if AEW does not sign CM Punk, they're dead in the water. CM, CM Punk is said I don't know about that, but CM Punk has said he is open to, to at least talking to WWE. He's not as sour as much how much of a sour puss as he used to be. He's just a puss now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean his own best friend. You know, so yeah, that must have been tough, dude. I can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, um, I know, I know, I should build towards the future, but I gotta go with the hot hand right now and the guy who, if I put him in any position, he's gonna be fantastic in doing it. I gotta go with AJ Styles. I knew you were gonna say AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. It's a good pick. For as long you know, if I can get AJ for two years, I can build everything else. Who has the first pick? How about that? That's a good question. It hasn't been determined yet. I'm sure they'll flip a coin. <laughs> yeah. I go AJ. If not AJ, I would actually go with the Miz. I would build around the Miz as well. Are you are you high? No. The Miz? 
is your first pick. It's a little bit of a wild pick, but look, the Miz is consistent. Yeah, that's not, that's not credible at all. It's so kind of he's consistent. He's a Grand Slam champion. He he headlined the worst WrestleMania of all time. Hello, what is there not yeah, this, to like? This this is a fake sport though. He, he's got scripted. He's got Miz and Misses. He's got the Marine franchise. This uh, man is a star. But no, in I'm, all seriousness, Miz. In all seriousness, Miz has an argument. He's consistent. Um, he's always going to be there. He's always going to be entertaining, no matter what role he's in. But because he's in that role, they can also not build the company around him because they know he'll be there no matter what. True. I don't think it's The Miz. I love The Miz, and I agree with everything you're saying because it's all true. I just don't think they're as hot on... Like, they don't need him to be a focal point. He's there to get other guys over. At this point, I feel. I'm not. I still think he has a main event running him. I do. That's me. So, well, oh, I really he, totally, have... he totally does. That's totally that's that's valid. Welcome back, credibility. <laughs> I missed you. Still having a hard time over there, Will. Me? Yeah. Well, picking the first pick. Yeah, who are you building your brand with? Oh, I, I said Roman. He's your top guy. True. He is the he is the new John Cena. I don't see it being any. I don't see the top guys on the two shows being anybody but Roman and AJ. But at the same time, that's how it's kind of been. Not even time. Seth. Mm, that's true. Well, I'm just assuming he's the Raw champion still, and he's just staying Raw. Those titles can switch real quick. Remember, everybody like champions aren't safe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, God, I mean, it's gonna be someone who's gonna be there too for like for the next. Yeah, it's gotta be Roman. He's a top dog. Yeah, for as long as Roman can go. I mean, I can see Roman and AJ that's leaving all, at that's, the same that's, time. That's, 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 that's Brock. I wouldn't do Brock. I don't think. I, I don't know. Actually, it's really interesting because I don't know how Brock is going to be. Like, if Brock is going to be solidified on SmackDown, we could see Weekly Brock. I highly doubt it. That's what I was thinking too. Maybe maybe Vince was like, "Hey, Brock Fox is going to pay you now." <laughs> yeah, and they have more. <laughs> they have more money than me. <laughs> yeah, they have motherfucking the money. Yeah. And plus, it's Friday. Like he just has to show up on Friday. He can just like literally just show up on Fridays. Then he has to like you know you tour. You do that one pay per view a week on Sundays, and then he doesn't have to show up again until next Friday. Like, Come on, Brock. It's Friday. We mean just work and you know Saturdays for the boys. You're good. <laughs> exactly. So I if, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a more consistent Brock, and then we can have the Marks stop bitching about Brock not being there. Dude, he doesn't need to wrestle. He just needs to stand there with Paul Heyman cuts promos. All right, that's yeah. all he needs to do. That's and bounce around. It. Bounce on, dude. I do the Brock bounce everywhere I go. I was playing flag <laughs> football last night with my friend. Like I was like, uh, I was quarterback doing the Brock bounce. <laughs> before I, before I hiked it. <laughs> Anytime I want to hype myself up, I do the Brock bounce. Yeah, it is a good hype up. So the WWE brand extension or the brand draft is going to be coming in a couple of weeks uh, in October. A lot of things coming in October, including us. We're coming early on thursdays when we go into october but let's talk into a very poignant um thing that happened outside of the ring um and it's had a lot of people talking i even texted kate about it when i was watching it after clash of champions um even though it did officially debuted the night before uh sasha banks chronicle came out um and it talked about and she talked about in very in as much detail as she uh, was willing to tell you, for the first time ever, from the horse's mouth, about why she went away from WWE for pretty much five to six months after WrestleMania, why she disappeared, um, and what she was doing in that downtime. It was one of those specials that really made you think. Um, about the 
health, but not the physical health, but the mental health of your favorite superstars and performers. I don't I only remember thinking only remember getting this way and having this thought when the Batista special happened. And mm-hmm. Batista talking about how I was like, I'm so alone because I because this is the life that I have to live if I want to do the things I do. And Sasha's were different because I think Sasha, even though I'm a giant Sasha, you know, fan, and I won't I won't ever like deny that. But even just as a I guess as a human being and someone also who's in the field of psychology and mental health, s- listening to Sasha say, I I lost myself. No one had called me my real name in five years. By the time WrestleMania hit, I was not there. I was so far gone. And then they showed the pictures where she's out in MetLife Stadium in front of 70 plus thousand people and she's a deer in headlights. Yeah, dude, it's like she's in a bingo hall. Yeah. Like, yeah, the one word I'm going to use to describe this, um, this chronicle was powerful. It was, it was very powerful, this in the emotion, but she kind of said a lot without saying anything yeah. um because like you said she, she only wanted to she was she wanted to share what she was comfortable sharing mm-hmm. like she really didn't go into many details at all she was just saying this is what i was feeling but not really what caused it or really what it was which hey it's her story to tell she can tell whatever the hell she wants but you still got the point across and it was it was another very well done WWE production like that's why AEW stands no fucking chance because yeah. they they can't they have been the elite on YouTube congratulations this this is this this is outstanding like if this was like on like television some of these chronicles and some of these stuff they put out they could they're definitely Emmy worthy like Absolutely. they're fucking phenomenal mm-hmm. um and from Sasha's perspective like I I totally get it like if I was her I probably I probably would have left those five months too. Like some things are just more important. Like in the internet, you know, would giving her a lot of shit for leaving or you know all those rumors. But she was like, "Fuck it, do I gotta do this for me?" Like some things are more important. So all respect in the world for doing that, a hundred percent. Yeah, she made the right call by doing it that way. And I don't know a lot of what she was saying, a lot of how she felt, it, like very much hit home to me. So it was very. Yeah. It was, like, scary. Some of the shit she was saying was, like, stuff I had been feeling, like, within the past week. It's like she took the thoughts out of my brain. Yeah, it was she, crazy. She she mentioned about how it was, like, just her going through the motion. It's, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to realize. And, like, we kind of hit this point when we did our... When we did our work, you know, a couple of months ago, where Will you kayfabed, like said you had lost a desire for your passion, but Sasha legitimately lost a desire to do the thing that she loved to do, and that's a sign of burnout, number one, from a psychological perspective. Um, and to be so done and just to go through the motions, it's really hard to do that, and eventually you have to get away and take your time and disappear. It happened to me. Um totally freaking out. It happened to me where I felt like I had totally lost my sense of self. And actually, I did kind of reverse instead of finding myself again. I escaped into the King Ricky Rose moniker for about a month. Um, but it, it happens to it happens to the best that like you lose yourself and you need that time to get away from everything, kind of just retool. And I'm glad that she took that time, um, that she got help. You know, she she did admit to say that she did go to she did go to therapy, um, and did see a counselor, which I'm very in, just even you know the stigma of therapy is going away little um little by little. I'm very happy about a lot of celebrities, not just wrestlers, but a lot of celebrities are saying I go to therapy, I seek out help when I need it. Um, Man, there's nothing there's there's nothing to be ashamed of going to therapy. I don't understand, I honestly don't understand that stigma. Um. It's an old way of thought. Maybe, maybe that's coming from someone who's also been to therapy and has had great success with therapy, but just going there and just talking about shit, it's going to make you feel better regardless. So I don't understand why there's a stigma on it. That's a conversation for a different day. But yeah, yeah but yeah, I mean, good for her. And she said she went to therapy. I was like, well, damn. Like, I, you, and you never realize that what they're going through by looking at it on, on, on TV. And like, Sasha said it the best in the Chronicle. Like, you, 
you only see me on television. You don't know me as Mercedes. You don't know me as Sasha Banks backstage. Like you don't, you don't know anything. You only yeah. know what's portrayed on television. And another thing, this kind of props to Vince and WWE Absolutely. for mm-hmm. letting her go. You know, people say like people on the internet love to say that like if you want time off, it's very hard to get because you lose your spot. Um, no, some is that <laughs> may be true because I mm-hmm. mean, but Sasha came back after taking a sabbatical through all the rumors. She's right back on top. She's better than she's ever been. She's in a better spot now than she's ever been. And all the rumors are saying that she's leaving because she's not, she's not happy with her spot. I mean, kernel of truth, but other than that, it's complete bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And I think Vince recognizes that more so now than maybe he did in years past. Yeah, you know, wisdom comes age. Or age yeah, comes wisdom. with age comes wisdom. <laughs> um, for the most part. Wisdom. <laughs> so and, and and it makes me think now, like Leo Russ was having issues, whether it be backstage politics or not. Now Leo Russ is back, and now Leo Russ is the number one contender. We know nothing about what Leo Russ went through while he was away, but I could, but I could assume and even speculate that it's probably similar to what Sasha was going through. Same thing with Luke Harper. Luke Harper has returned, and now he's in a prominent position on SmackDown now. And it's it's good that these guys or gals go away for like a few months because yeah. absence makes the heart grow fonder. Like everyone's saying, when Sasha coming back, when Sasha coming back. But the longer you wait, the more you want her. And when she comes back, mm-hmm. it's just that much better. It was huge, and I think what was really poignant was that she even had, even though it was kind of it hurt her from the way she said it. But he, when she said when she talked to Bailey about it, Bailey was like, "Just go." Hmm. You know, she was like, she said, I don't know if she said Mercedes, but Sasha was like, I talked to Pam, and Pam said, just go. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what else Pam? I was like, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. I was like, I, I, I thought, thought it was maybe it was a friend from home, because I figured she went back home and had some time with her family or whatever. But no, I see Bailey. I'm like, oh, yeah, Pam. Pam. <laughs> Pam. My, girl, my, best, my best friend, Pam. <laughs> she's, she's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so it's good for her. I'm my, glad. My, my, one, my one problem with mm-hmm. this chronicle, but I think it is worth mentioning, like, after watching it, it's fucking impossible to boo her now. Like, because she is <laughs> yeah. playing a heel on TV. Like, how do you boo someone after, like, after watching that? Um, it's hard. It's so I, hard. I, it's, I don't want to say poor timing on WWE to put that out, but... Poor timing on putting it out because <laughs> <laughs> she's supposed to be a monster heel, and you portray her, and she portrays herself as a massive baby face. And I get it; there's a difference between the Mercedes and Sasha Banks, which is fair. And I can put myself outside of that, but mm-hmm. subconsciously and subliminally, like she's Sasha Banks. She's not Mercedes, whatever. She's Sasha. Banks. Mercedes V. I forgot what it is. <laughs> Yeah, but right now she's a heel, so yeah, I, that, that's the tough part. It is the tough part, but I think in this day and age, and I'll give the mark some credit, I think we're sophisticated enough as fans now to know the difference. Most of us. Most that's of fair. us are. That's fair. So I think this is okay to come out with. Um... But again, I'm happy that she's back. I'm happy. I'm happy Leo Rush is back. I'm happy Luke, Luke Harper's back. And even if even if Vince reluctantly gave him time off, and then brought him back in main event roster spots. From a business perspective, he had to. He he, he had to. If he's really gonna fight AEW, everybody's gonna be on deck. Yeah. Sasha came back at the right time. Luke Harper came back at the right time. Leo Rush came back at the right time. You're the the performers that that Marks and Stans really talk about on Twitter all came back. They're all still a part of the product, and now it's you got what you wanted, <laughs> and now everybody's got to deliver. Here um, we go. Here we go. Yeah, pretty much. All buckle up. It is going to be such a fun fall. All such right. a fun fall. Uh, moving along. Before we get out of here, uh, a bunch of us are going to evolve. Myself, uh, Kate Murphy, forever. Will Tarashock, uh, Bones will be there as well. I think we're going to see the uh, the independent one. David Malkovich. Uh, I, miss also... me Dave. I miss Dave. Yeah. Uh, I miss Dave. <laughs> <laughs> David Malkovich is going to be there as well. It's going to be a jam-packed Evolve event. 
Uh, they have a bunch of NXT superstars doing meet and greets. Arturo Ruas, uh, Baba Tunde. If you've ever seen Baba Tunde in person, holy Christ, he is a big man. Um, uh, you have Candice LeRae, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. Um, Walter is going to be fighting against Cassius Ono at Laboom and Queens. And also, you have the uh, you have a meet and greet with the newest NXT superstar and Evolve Wrestling Champion Austin Theory. I'm losing so much money on meet and greets and autographs this week. Me too. <laughs> so much money. Um, I'll I'll be a guy just for photographer so I can beat them. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already met Gargano. I know, but it's just it's just <laughs> worth it's just worth shaking your hand and saying hi. Yeah. No. <laughs> I I totally agree with um we have Josh Briggs versus Austin Theory for the Evolve um, Championship. Pumped for Josh Briggs to get this belt. Yeah. We <laughs> Honestly, what a better way for him to solidify his comeback after that injury than winning it in Laboom. Mm-hmm. You know, um there's a bunch of other matches. Obviously AR Fox and the Skulk are gonna be there. So once you smell a would you smell a giant whiff of marijuana? AR Fox is in the building. Or out of the building. <laughs> or out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on when you first uh, step in. I know. <laughs> so Evolve's happening in the evening, in the afternoon. Um, in the afternoon, <laughs> and I will also be at Shine. We're going to watch. <laughs> we're going to watch Will not kill himself. Um, That's shots. Why I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be like illegal in New York soon. <laughs> That's why he's in New Jersey. Touche. Um. Shotzi Blackheart, uh, Kate Murphy's spirit animal, mm-hmm. will be wrestling against Allison K for the uh, for the Shine Championship. Eva Lee versus Mercedes Martinez is finally. also gonna... yes, my God, finally. Um, and don't worry, Kate Murphy, Shotzi Blackheart is also wrestling on Evolve that night as well. Yes. <laughs> so you get to see her. Uh, it's like I said, if you guys have ever been to Laboom and Evolve, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I've never been disappointed at a show there. Uh, they put on great. They put on great talent. It's a very quick show, um, and it's a very entertaining show every time I've gone. That's why I keep going back. So if you're going to be at Laboom and Evolve, come find us. We'll be on the stage. Maybe we'll run into Zarian of the Matt Men Podcast, and maybe we'll go. Maybe we'll go to Sapphire after the show. <laughs> Honestly, dude, if it's a, it's a Saturday. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. <laughs> it is. Kate, you're also <laughs> Obviously, it's, it's for the boys and non-binaries. No girls allowed. No <laughs> girls allowed. I like it. All right, real quick, match Saturdays of the night. are for the boys and the non-binaries. All right, real quick, <laughs> out of here, folks. Match of the week, king of the night. All in one. Kate, go. No. Okay. All right. So my match of the night, I've been struggling because wrestling's just been really good. But I think the match that I think made me, like, just react the most was Leo Rush tonight. Mm. That match was great. He, that I was, jacket he had was great, too. That was a great match. Oni Lorcan looked great. It was really energetic. Leo Rush does not have ring rust on him. And I genuinely didn't expect him to come back. So that was a nice surprise. My, yeah. my king of the night. Is John Cena for following you on? Because John Cena finally followed me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on Friday well. the third, on Friday the thirteenth, no less. Yeah, he followed another one of our people on Twitter as well. I know he follows Jeff. I think he follows Fritz. Oh, you know everything that happened with Jeff's social media because he posts with the exclamation <laughs> points. All the Fire time. Fire like my tweet. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just here, like, cool. <laughs> Max, Max. <laughs> Will uh, match of the week. All right, match of the week. I'm going Randy Kofi because goddamn, I've been saying this forever. They gotta go full 360, and they did. So two shades WWE for that. Um, my king and I got this with a little bit of a story. So I had a dream last night. Mm-hmm. For some reason, like I was in like this place where people try, I, I'm, people are always trying to kill me in my dreams, and it was very, very weird. Um, but for some reason, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley went in a swimming pool, and <laughs> Vince McMahon came over and stepped on a button, 
and the pool was electrocuted, and they both died. <laughs> and I turned to Vicky, you're there for some reason, and I turned to you, and me, you, and like 30 other people stopped cheering, Brock's dead! Brock's dead! <laughs> <laughs> like, so... I don't. I don't know what that says. I don't know what that's. I don't know what that says more about me or wrestling fans. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna give it to Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Did you kill him in your dream? <laughs> Vince killed him technically. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Vince. 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 Mc, Vince McFano snapped. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my match of the week is going to go to that fatal four-way uh, to kick off, <laughs> NXT, kick off the NXT uh, live era on the USA Network. I mentioned it earlier in the show. All those ladies brought it. Fantastic. Everybody looked spectacular. Those are your core four of that NXT women's division, and everybody um, deserved to shine, and they shined like no other because, again, like I said, NXT started the women's revolution in all of wrestling. Um, and it was only fitting that the women opened up the live era of NXT. So shout out to Candice Ray. I want to make sure that I congratulate her on her win um, on that Wednesday when I meet her uh, this Saturday at Evolve. King of the Night um, goes... Uh, shit, I had it too. <laughs> King of the Night goes to Mauro Ranallo. Okay, another NXT. I'm pro NXT right now. I was going to say Roddy Strong. We're going to go with Mauro because... Morrow did not miss a beat going live on TV. It was like he never left SmackDown. But he's just on NXT now. Morrow was absolutely fantastic. Um, The bipolar rock and roller, another mental health advocate in and of himself, Morrow Ronaldo, who had a fantastic special on Showtime. I I heard it was outstanding. Yeah. Um, So goes out to Morrow Ronaldo. If there's anything that's going to really help NXT transition into that live era, it's going to be the announcing of Mauro Ronaldo because Mauro is the best announcer in all of sports. He's I'll one of the best ever. He's one yeah. of the best. Even John Maron's just like, yeah, he's a good talker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you see the defense. Now Mauro Ronaldo talking. It's good shit. <laughs> Yes, all right. Any everything that we missed this week? We covered a crap ton because there was a, there was a shit ton to talk about. Well, I'm currently watching NXT on mute from a while ago, and Ricky, you just lost to Don and Jad Dajakovic, but goddamn, what a match. Oh, yeah, it was a great match. Beat my ass, though. That's right. I go home to Mia Yim every week. So, <laughs> with that being said, let us get the fuck out of here with some beer. And some money. That's your cue, well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 165. Vince McDaniels. Of course, I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Find me on Ambassador the Bigs, where all social media can be found. Find Kings of the Rings podcast, KOTR underscore podcast on all social media. Snapchat may be coming up soon. Um, and subscribe to us and listen to us where all podcasts can be found. That iTunes, that Spotify, that iHeartRadio um that google podcast by subscribing to wrestle attic radio and find wrestle attic radio on all social media at attic underscore wrestle on twitter and wrestle attic radio on facebook and instagram we also have a patreon as well five dollars a month gets you everything that you could e- ever ask for which means a lot more of jeff talking about his tattoos but anywho <laughs> enough of that tattoo talk wrestling is golden we're going to evolve we're going to be going to Raw in early November as well. I'm getting a new tattoo um, in the next couple of weeks. So it's it's all good. It's, it's all good for me. Kate, how about you? It's all good in the hood. We're going to Evolve. We're going to Raw. Um, what else am I doing? I've been chilling. I'm chilling. I need to like get tattooed villain? soon. I'm chilling like a villain. Sipping White Zippin' Dylan? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go chill. Well, what do you got? This is normally a part of the show where I yell, but it's so early, like it's so late at night. I don't want to get a knock on my door. So you should be whisper instead. It's, it's, oh, this is gonna be my ASMR outro. It's me. It's me. <laughs> beer it's, money. Oh, sorry. S H beer money. <laughs> Where the kings of the 
<laughs> all, right, all right, stop whispering. Anyway, folks, we'll, we'll be back next week for pretty much the last time that we'll ever be on Friday. Because so once we hit October and once AEW and SmackDown and everybody moves and debuts, we will be coming a little bit early each and every week. And we will be debuting on our new slot on Thursday night, folks. So until next Friday, for the last time ever on Fridays, we are the Kings of the Rings. Goodbye. And good night. And fuck you, Slack. But a bing, but a boom. Realest guys in the room. How you doing? Oh, I also, <laughs> I also, I also forgot to mention this. So I sold, um, I sold a hat um, on Facebook Marketplace last you week. Sold, you sold the KTR podcast hat? No, 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 no. My, my, Brooklyn, my Brooklyn Dodgers hat. Really? Uh, okay. So- yeah, so I, I'm selling. I'm trying to sell a bunch of shit on Facebook. So this guy was from uh, like Melville in New York. So I had to mail it. I had to mail it to him. So I had him pay me ten dollars for the hat beforehand. This is I ship it, and then he paid me for shipping afterwards. Mm-hmm. But the motherfucker hasn't paid me shipping yet, and it was seventeen dollars for shipping. Uh, so I am currently minus seven dollars when I sell this thing and selling this hat. And the <laughs> motherfucker's name is motherfucker's name is Enzo. <laughs> I'm. I can almost guarantee this Enzo you speak of does not. <laughs> it's not the same Enzo, especially when in Melville. No, but the fact that his name is Enzo it just pisses me off enough. True. Well, we also didn't talk about. Did you hear about um, Big Cass's mental? I did. I was... feel. I'm sad for him. Yeah, it's very bad for him. What do you do? He, he had, had like a, a mental breakdown at um Pat Buck's last show in Jersey. Yeah. And he got into it with Joey Janela. <laughs> Dude, yeah. what, what is with Big Cass and Enzo getting into a Joey Janela? I don't I know why Joey they just like Joey Janela. <laughs> I guess Joey Janela's got that kind of face, but fucking Big Cass went up to Joey Janela and was talking shit about the whole Blink 182 concert thing. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't even present for. No, he and wasn't. he just like caused a scene and was like disorderly. And the things he was he was saying, apparently, like raised cause for concern. And they had called an ambulance. Mm-hmm. Well, and, they're not showing up in NXT. Good one, Melser. And there was a rumor that he was supposed to be probably coming back on a WWE as like a producer. Yeah. Um, but he he went to Instagram and said that he is taking a bunch of time off and may or may not return to becoming a public figure. I don't think he'll come back. Sounds dramatic. Oh yeah. You know, so I don't think he's coming back. Enzo like retweeted or reposted what he said on his own Instagram. He Sorry. also said a really nice thing on his Twitter. I think it was today. I think he tagged Big Cass in it, and he goes, he goes, whether you come back or not, he goes, he goes, friendship over business forever. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I loved them. I'm sorry. Forever. I will love Enzo and Cass. They had a great thing going if they would have just shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's all they had to do. Hey, man, their gimmick was not showing the fuck up. What do you expect? <laughs> I, know. I related to that gimmick. I live that gimmick. That's all they had to do. It was like, just shut up, guys. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> I mean, they had their moment. They made it all the way to WrestleMania. And then the Hardys debuted in their match. Yeah, I don't remember. I... Which, which one did they in? I couldn't remember. <laughs> It was the uh, the the ladder match. Yeah, I know. I remember now. God, being there in person was fantastic. I'm jealous. God, I was like a kid in a candy. It was like Christmas Day all over again. I watched that. I was at Richie Caitlin's living room, and I literally jumped out of my chair. I swear to God, you would have thought I would have burst through the ceiling, and I broke down crying. Oh no! Everybody in my everybody in my section was the same way. Mm-hmm. The best part about that story is that right right before that ladder match happened, Dave, in his infinite wisdom, was like, "I'm gonna go get food and more beer." So he missed the entire thing. No, he didn't. Yeah, that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. He was online getting food. Poetic justice. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, like I knew. I knew in my soul they were coming back. Like I knew it. I had so many doubts. I was like, Vince would never do this. I remember talking on the show and be like, Vince would never do this on his own WrestleMania. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> Because I remember being excited because I already had tickets to Raw for the next week. Mm-hmm. And that when they won, that's when it became very real to me that I was going to see the Hardy Boys wrestle live. Yeah, that's true. Because that was my first Red WWE event was that Superstar Shake-Up in 2017. Oh, yeah, we were at that. So that was my first WWE event, and I saw the Hardy Boys. Hey, and Google. I cried. <laughs> That was also the night Jinder Mahal gave Finn, Finn Balor a concussion. That yep. was that was the night Roman and Braun and the ambulance or the the ambulance. Yep, that was a good. That was a good raw. Too. That was an amazing yeah. raw. Yeah, that was the first raw back at the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> it's that time. It's that time again. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya. Bye.